So today we're gonna to talk about the seven things that you should never say to a motivated seller. Now, the last episode, I actually talked about the six things you should never say to a cash buyer. So I thought this would be a nice compliment. But before I jump in today's show, if you have not been to nextlevelwholesaling.com, you gotta head, head on over there. If you wanna make more money in your wholesaling business, you wanna do big, fat, juicy, profitable deals, you want more money, you want more time, you want a business that runs without you and throws off cash month after month after month, head on over there and take the free assessment. It's gonna rate you in the four core areas of your wholesaling business. After you take it, you're gonna be like, oh man, I know that the, the very next thing, I'm super clear. So go ahead and take it and then hit me up on Instagram. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, I'd love to see you make more money in your business. All right, so let's talk about the seven things or seven deadly sins that you should never say to a motivated seller. Remember, our goal here is to do big, fat, juicy wholesale deals. I want you to have a wildly profitable business. I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to have a lot of time, have large margins, and have a business that you feel great about, that serves you. And that's what talking to motivated sellers is all about, saying the right things, shutting up when you're supposed to shut up. And so, Let's talk about the seven things that you should never say, and I'll give you some tips on some of the right things to say. This one drives me crazy, and I hear this a lot. I'd really like to do business with no additional caveats with that, right? I'd really like to buy your house. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to make this happen for you. The seller does not care what you want. They are not attuned to your needs. They are not going to do you a favor. The only thing they care about is their needs. And that's what you should care about is their needs because that's how you are going to make a $50,000 profit on the deal is by helping them. There's an exchange of value. They've got a problem. And part of your value is listening. They want to vent. And they want to know that after they vent to you, that you're going to take this thing away and they're never going to have to see it again. They do not care that you would like to do business, okay? They only care that you are listening to their pain and how you are gonna take it away after you listen. So, instead of saying, I'd really like to do business, I'd ask a question like, Mr. Seller, why did you call me today? Mr. Seller, how do you think I can help you? And then just shut up. Right? Let them tell you. I know that's counterintuitive, but just listen. And they will do the selling for themselves. Number two, sounds like you're motivated. Sounds like you've got a problem. Sounds like you need to get rid of this thing. Right, All the same where you tell a seller they have a problem. Now I can tell you this, man, oh man, this one is dangerous because once you chase the dog, you tell them they are gonna run the other direction. I tell the story about Molly, my dog, all the time. Molly, greatest dog ever, sweet little puppy. She used to run right out the door when I was a kid, when you used to open it. And we used to chase her, and she used to run the other way. And that's the equivalent to telling a seller they have a problem. Sounds like you're motivated. <laughs> and so what do we do to get Molly? We ran the other direction, ran back in the house, and Molly would follow us right back into the house. So instead of saying, sounds like you're motivated, I'm gonna use the opposite, something that, I've, that I teach in the No Limit Selling System. You wanna use something called a stealth mismatch, where you actually do the opposite of what the seller expects you to say, and then they will chase you in return. So instead of saying, sounds like you're motivated, I might say, look, it sounds like you're all set here, right? Sounds like you might wanna list with a real estate agent, sell for top dollar. Sounds like you might wanna fix this property on your own and hold it as a rental. Now, when you say that, the seller uh, is, is if they have any kind of problem whatsoever, I'm gonna say, no, I don't wanna do that. I called you because X, Y, Z, all right? This next one, oh, this one's weak. Don't let this be you. I could come up on price. Oh. So I see some people who will offer a price or there's a conversation, I'll give you $150,000 and the seller says nothing or there's an awkward silence or hymns and haws or ghost them. And then they just start, either coming up on price or saying I could come up. I can tell you nothing's gonna sell or scare a seller faster than you saying that you can come up on price. It will turn them off. 
They will think that they can do better. They will run down the street and never come back. They will run a marathon away from you the second you say, I could come up, even if you're initially lower than they want to be. Let them talk. If you do come up, let it be slow and painful and work for the seller. Next one, I'll match my competitor. I'll match that offer. Uh, many too, Many people are way, way, way too quick to do that. I want to find out the value. So the first thing I'll say when they say, well, Mr. So-and-so gave me X. First thing is I'll say, that's a really, really good offer. You should take that and run. Now, a lot of wholesalers are scared to say that because they're like, oh, okay, well, I'll go do that. See you later. No, they're going to hopefully give you some kind of objection. Well, I didn't like them. I didn't like that person because they were 20 minutes you know, uh, uh, their office is 20 minutes away from me. Or, or uh, you know, I know your cousin who works at the school. Whatever that is. Find something where they want to work with you. Next, uh, you should trust me because blank. If you start selling yourself, well, listen, I've been in business for 20 years. I live down the block here. Uh, you can call all of my references. I'm a nice guy. I go to church. I pray six times a day. I eat kosher, you know, all of this stuff. You know, the seller is going to not be impressed if it's presented in that way. Now, the way that I like to do this is I like to sprinkle my qualifications in my communications with the seller. So I, in the bottom of my email, I like to have a, a link to our testimonial reviews. I like to have a, a screenshot of our reviews. I like to have my Google business profile all set up and a ton of reviews there. I like to have business cards. You want to show up on time and say what you want to say um, or show up on time when you say, excuse me. Uh, you want to be respectful when you talk to the seller. You want to be upfront with the seller and they will trust you. If you tell a seller <clears throat> that you are in the business of making a profit and you'll be upfront with them, right? They will trust you more than if all of a sudden you act like you're not innocent to make a profit and doing them a favor. Okay. You're going to do them a favor by giving them speed and convenience, period. Next, uh, let's get this deal signed today. Don't say that. Let the seller say that. Mr. Seller, we've been talking for a week and it seems like you've been dragging your feet the entire way. What's the next step here? And then let them tell you. Right? What is the next step? When would you like to close? Who do you need to talk to to make this happen? By the way, Mr. Seller, it's okay if you want to tell me no, that's totally okay. But if you want to do the deal, what day would be right for you? And then let them tell you. This last one, uh, I don't really like. It, and because it's going to put you between a rock and a hard place. If you go through a seller's property and start putting dollar values on a roof or a window or a floor or the plumbing, you are now buying on logic and not emotion. And so I do not like to point out all the work in words that the, the property needs. I like to, if I'm there, I like to touch it. I like to make sounds. I like to let the seller take me notes. I like to stare and give it a weird look. Hmm. Right. Um, I like to make the seller uneasy with how they think I feel, not what comes out of my mouth. So that's really, really, really important. In addition, if for whatever reason you need a reduction later or the seller has a hard time with you making a profit at closing, you didn't say your house needs X, Y, Z, and this is why I didn't do it. Just you want to keep your options open. But also if you're not a rehabber, like don't act like you're going to fix it up, <laughs> right? Don't do that. That way, if you don't lie, you don't have to remember who you lied to. And it's just, it's just more fun to tell the truth, right? Some people may not do business with you because you're too, too truthful, but I find that I get the deal more because I'm truthful all the time. So let's review these seven. Um, I'd really like to do business. Sounds like you're motivated. I could come up on price. I'll match my competitor. You should trust me because let's get this signed today and your house needs X. Don't do it. 
<laughs> Most of this I talk about in detail in the No Limit Selling System. You gotta buy it, nolimitsalesystem.com. Super, super reasonable. Look, if you're like, Todd, I'm not gonna spend any money, go ahead, listen to all my podcasts. You could probably string a lot of that information together for free. Either way, my wish for you is to do a big, fat, juicy deal. So send me that check. Hit me up on Instagram. I'd love to see a picture of it or what you're doing in business. Head over to nextlevelwholesaling.com. Take the assessment and I will talk to you on the next episode.